that means new games. If your 2023 resolution was to stop buying so many board games this year, look away now as we have a full 20 games to look forward to and my bank account is already looking scared. From legacy titles to sink hours into, dungeon delving adventures for fantasy fans and peaceful tile laying experiences, there's something for every player. I'm Wheels from Dicebreaker and these are some of the best board games to look forward to in 2023. Join a coven and fight to become its leader in the witchy board game Septima. With a beautiful and rustic art style, adorable meeples and muted colour palette, Septima is a game that will be lovely just to have on a shelf. But it's the strategic fight between you and the other witches that will have you getting out to admire over and over in 2023. As your secret coven's previous leader steps down, you'll have to prove yourself as the next best candidate. Gain the respect of your fellow witches through brewing potions, collecting ingredients, and healing sick townsfolk. Despite your best efforts to help the villagers though, witches still face persecution and you may be called to an infamous witch trial. So be wary of catching the witch hunter's attention, but make sure you're still standing out amongst the coven. Part cooperation as you try to keep your order safe, and part competition to rise to the top, Septima is a game for one to four players that will have everyone at the table donning a pointy hat, mainly because they look amazing and who wouldn't take the excuse to wear one. Septima goes into production early this year for the crowdfunded copies, so we should hopefully see it hitting shelves, for the rest of us anyway, sometime shortly after. This is one to keep an eye on in your crystal ball for 2023. <laughs> Madness, two to four players take up the roles of railway tycoons trying to make as much money as possible in the Old West. They intend to make their fortunes by laying as many railway lines as possible in the Gold Rush era. You might be thinking that such a board game sounds simple enough, but this is not just any board game, folks. It's a dexterity game. You have just 15 seconds to maneuver your own little train around the track without any mishaps like the train coming apart falling off the track, or dropping the all-important meeples that represent the passengers you pick up at each station. If all that pressure and nimble movement wasn't enough, it's up to one of your fellow players to time you and eventually yell at you to stop. Let's be real, they might forget or even give you a cheeky bit of extra time to keep them on your good side. And we can't forget the fact that making money hinges on you passing your station and yelling out, ding ding! With colourful characters, lots of replayability and delightful rules, we can't wait to see this one hit the board game scene this year. For those that watched our PAX Unplugged wrap-ups in December 2022, you might have already heard of this game after our editor Matt Jarvis got a quick run-through. For everyone else, let us introduce you to Mistwind. This is a strategic route building game all about transporting whales. Oh, you heard that right. You get to work with big majestic creatures that soar through misty mountain peaks to deliver goods. Did I mention the whales can fly? There are even cute whale meeples to represent your creatures. Adorable. As the head of a trades company, you're looking to expand your network and bring your flying whales to even more people. So you'll be looking to gain resources and build new outposts for your wards to travel to, training up more of the flying behemoths and delivering goods to fulfill orders and therefore grow your contacts across nations. All in the hopes of becoming the most trusted trader in the world of Mistwind. Using action discs over just four rounds, players will have to decide what they want to do and what they want to skip each turn to create the most efficient trade empire. Mistwind is a game for two to five players that takes 60 to 90 minutes, perfect for an afternoon gaming with your head in the clouds. When it was released in 2021, the original Sleeping Gods caught the eyes of more than a few tabletop gamers with its gorgeous artwork, imaginative world building, and accessible storytelling gameplay. Its sequel, Sleeping Gods colon Distant Skies, looks to build on what made the first game so well received with a new world to explore and a more refined combat system to experience. Taking place during the late 1930s, Distant Skies sees players stepping into a strange world populated by incredible creatures after their plane passes through a sudden storm. With more than a little Narnia about it, Distant Skies is an adventure board game that seeks to inspire delight, awe, and maybe a little fear in its players. 
Unlike most board games, Distant Skies isn't played on a game board. Instead, players flick through a book containing various maps representing the different locations that players would explore in their journeys across the mysterious land they find themselves in. Throughout the game, the players will venture out into the fantastical world to search for resources, allies, and answers. Along the way, they may encounter dangerous creatures or people who they'll need to fight to continue their adventures. Distant Skies is very much selling itself as Sleeping Gods Plus, if you've played the first entry in the series, which is certainly not a bad thing considering how well it went down with so many players. Released in 2017, Slay the Spire is an indie video game that has players ascending a tower filled to the brim with enemies and strange encounters. It makes a lot of sense that this particular video game is getting adapted into a board game when you consider that it already features a tabletop gaming mechanic, deck building. Whilst the video game exists purely as a solo experience, the upcoming board game version will enable fans of the original to climb the tower alongside their friends. Slay the Spire, the board game, looks to be a one-to-one -one adaption of the video game, including its cast of playable characters. As in the video game, the Slay the Spire board game will see players choosing between a selection of four different heroes, with each one offering a unique playstyle. For example, the Silent is great at dealing out massive damage, but not so much at taking it, whereas the Defect is a much slower but more defensive option. Each character begins the game with their own starter deck, with various opportunities to acquire more cards found along the way up the big tower. Much like its video game Big Brother, Slay the Spire the board game is a roguelike experience, meaning that whenever players fail, they'll need to start the game from the very beginning. I know it's hard, don't worry about it. Whilst there are save points scattered throughout the Spire, enabling them to start from that point next time they play, players will need to be careful to avoid dying before they're able to reach the next save point. Whilst Slay the Spire the board game won't offer anything particularly new on top of the video game, besides its multiplayer functionality, it will definitely be a draw for people who want more of the series. The question is, will the tabletop variant live up to its namesake? Originally released in 2009, Cyclades was a fresh take on your standard dudes on a map war game that fused battling and city building with an auction mechanic that forced you to vie for the attention of the fickle Grecian gods. You want to move your soldiers? Well, you'll need the support of Ares. Poseidon is in control of your ships, and Zeus will be able to improve your economy. The trick is, only one player will get the support of any one god each turn. Let the bidding begin. Confusingly titled Cyclades 2, the upcoming board game is actually a remake of the original, rather than a straight-up sequel. Whilst the core gameplay of the first Cyclades will be kept intact, other elements such as the, the board, the victory conditions, and the pool of summons will be altered for the new version. Fans of the original can still expect to travel around the Greek islands searching for gold to summon the hulking mythical creatures they need to conquer their opponents. Cyclades 2 also looks to add a fresh coat of paint to the formula with a modular board a la Inish. A separate track for summoning Greek heroes and revamp miniatures to boot. Cyclades 2 looks like the perfect way for fans to revitalize their love for the series and for new players to experience it for the first time. It's always great to see beloved board games get a new lease of life, especially when they have gameplay systems as solid as the ones found in Cyclades. There's really no excuse not to give this one a go right now. Last of Us is a hot property at the moment, with a remake recently released on the PS5 and an HBO Max series having just aired. The Last of Us train continues to roll full steam ahead, with the series' first tabletop adaption arriving this year. Based on the Escape the Dark gameplay system, The Last of Us Escape the Dark is an upcoming board game that looks to recreate the first entry in the video game series, but on the tabletop. The board game will allow players to play as Ellie, Joel, and more to explore an open world map in order to prepare for a final journey to their ultimate destination, Jackson. All the while dealing with everything from hordes of deadly clickers to a human ambush. The risk reward element of The Last of Us Escape the Dark is where much of the game's tension and scares come from. The players need to venture to certain locations to prepare for their journey to Jackson, as well as open up new routes to explore, but 
every moment of travel leaves them vulnerable. Players will experience a variety of encounters in the board game, including combat encounters with enemies of varying difficulty. They'll also have a chance to recuperate and manage their inventory during nights around the campfire. The Last of Us Escape the Dark is due for release in December 2023. Oh, I'm excited about this one. Studio Horrible Guild is following up on The King's Dilemma with a sequel that looks to improve and expand on it in every way. The Queen's Dilemma takes place 100 years after the first game, focusing on the Serene of Libra, the last remaining heir to the Ankist throne. Each player in The Queen's Dilemma takes the role of one of these council members and must collectively decide on how they should advise the monarch. Unlike in the first game, rather than representing a house tied to a certain ideology, players in the sequel can pick between a cast of diverse characters, each with their own goals to achieve. Players will have to be prepared to face the music, should they choose to favour themselves, over the well-being of the people of Ankist. The concept of the Dilemma series is easily strong enough to support a plethora of entries, as there isn't really anything else out there like it. The Queen's Dilemma Kickstarter pledges are due to be fulfilled in December, with the opportunity for late pledges set to open soon. Publish your very own newspaper in the animal journalist board game, Fit to Print. From the publishers of Calico and Cascadia, you'll be laying tiles to create your own front page spread to get the most attention and therefore score the most points. As adorable animal reporters, you can pick from a shared pool of images and text at the beginning of each round, making up the stories, photos and ads that you can place on your page. Then you have to carefully arrange all your genius reporting into one page. Do you have enough to cover the paper or will you have to cut important sections? The puzzling aspect makes you your very own editor. Looks like it has the same calm quality of similar tile laying titles like Calico. Plus, the incredible art of tree frogs making zoning laws and bears in fancy court pursuits means you'll be excited to pick stories to tell from across Thistleville's setting. Fit to Print was funded on Kickstarter late last year and is slated to be with backers by October, with the chance to still become a late backer and get a copy too. It plays solo or up to six players and in only 15 to 30 minutes, so you can easily play this with the whole family or away from your beloved but noisy lot as you arrange cute critters in your very own newspaper. Ah, <sighs> bliss. The Dicebreaker team is good pals with Geralt of Rivia. We even led him through a village infested with crones during a Comic-Con live show. However, he does not feature in this new tabletop entry for the Witcher franchise. The Witcher Old World allows you to play as a Witcher, a monster slaying extraordinaire, in order to take down the copious amounts of wandering beasts all around the continent. Two to five players can take up the role of rival Witchers, each hailing from different Witcher schools. You can cast your magic and use combat techniques to fight deck building, allowing you to try and get the best cards possible to take down enemies, both monster and rival. All you have to do to win the game is acquire a predetermined number of trophies that can be won via bar brawls, monster slayings, completing quests, and more, all of which sounds as though they stay true to the video games. You get all of this as well as a solo mode for when you fancy being a lone Witcher instead. We really can't wait to see how this game takes shape. The Witcher Old World should be shipping out this March. Have you ever wanted to immerse yourself in the hustle and bustle of a thriving publishing company? All the while inhabiting the role of an editor during the golden age of comic books? Well, it might be quite niche, but our ability to enjoy this game is certainly not. During each round, you place your meeples or editors around the board and try to complete various publishing tasks, ensuring that you accomplish these actions in any order. Hire, develop, ideas, print, sales, and royalties. The object of the game is to amass the most fans, money, and make a truly impressive portfolio of work. There's a lot to keep track of in order to make it to the top of the comic book game, and Age of Comics The Golden Years portrays that in a unique, eye-catching, and entertaining way.
The time has come to take to the skies and create the city of the future we all knew was coming. Skyrise has players taking up the roles of some of humanity's greatest visionaries to help make the cities of Skyrise the cosmopolitan marvel that the mayor wants and needs it to be. Certain things like art, science, and beauty must all be taken into account when embarking on this substantial endeavor. Each and every player is competing for the chance to be remembered as the best of the best, and will be looking to acquire land to build their creations upon, earn favor, and also to score objectives and more to create your very own wonder. With all of this and gorgeous art and a beautiful game board to boot, we can't wait to get our hands on this one. Your family has grown bamboo for generations, and this work has been successfully shared by several clans that do the same. The goal of this game is simple, grow bamboo and use the prosperity from it to take care of your family and be happy. It's a very wholesome premise that uses action management and tile optimization. There are four rounds, each of which represent a year, which are then split into the four seasons. You'll be able to do various things on your turn, like burn incense to gain favor with the spirits, or go in another direction and use bamboo to seek balance cook, improve your home, or even manage your finances. Things won't always be easy for you and your family though, as you'll need to adequately prepare for tougher seasons like winter, stocking up on supplies carefully to make sure you don't fall behind. Though this game is easy to learn, there is a lot more depth in it than meets the eye, and you can always challenge yourself with the advanced game mode too. Definitely not one to miss. Not to be confused with Skyrim the Adventure Game, which we played on our channel back in 2021, The Elder Scrolls Betrayal of the Second Order takes us beyond the icy north and into the entirety of Tamriel, taking place during the Plain Meld in which the Daedric Lord Molag Bal attempted to merge Tamriel with his demonic realm, kind of like what he does in the best game in the series, Oblivion. Betrayal of the Second Order has players investigating the necromantic order of the Black Worm, although if that lore means nothing to you, don't worry, it's just classic fun fantasy stuff. As adventurers, players will be able to create their own characters by choosing from a selection of different classes and species that you'll recognize from the games. Then, the team of fighters will head off to explore Tamriel, diving into dungeons and leveling up the selection of skills they wield along the way. Betrayal of the Second Order looks to combine role-playing elements with dice rolling seen in the popular Too Many Bones game from publisher Chip Theory Games 2. Overall, it looks like a game to get stuck into with multiple adventures to play through. So what are you waiting for, heroes? Grab your sweet roll and get ready for the crowdfunding campaign in March 2023. The next game from the creator of Root sees players creating epic space stories in arc, collapse and conflict in the void. Taking place in a sci-fi universe during the final days of a decaying empire, players become the leaders of a series of factions hoping to make the most of the crisis. Coming to backers in December, there's still time to put in a late pledge to secure yourself a copy for 2023. The editorial team tried an early version of Ark last year, but weren't blown away. However, having spoken to the designer and seeing an updated version of PAX Unplugged, the excitement for sci-fi strategy has been reignited. Something the team particularly enjoyed was the trick-taking system, which determines turn order and the actions of each round. Whoever leads plays a card which dictates what the others can do. This system makes for a really compelling loop, forcing players to carefully plan their strategies around what they have in their hand and what card they think that the current leader will play. Will you stick with the same card, matching what the leader played, or risk carving your own destiny? Like designer Cole Worley's other games, Root and Oaf, distinctive artwork from Carl Ferrin is back, sketching out the aliens in ships in a pleasing illustrative style that makes everything look cool but adorable at the same time. Who's a good alien faction leader? You are! A potential replacement to the cancelled Star Wars Destiny card game, Star Wars The Deck Builder game is set to be launched in 2023. 
in it, unsurprisingly, members of the Rebel Alliance battle against the Empire, taking control of iconic locations from across the galaxy. Stop me if you've heard this before. With veteran card game designer Caleb Grace behind it, known for Marvel Champions and the Lord of the Rings card games, this is a deck builder to watch. As one of the two possible players, you'll be looking to expand a basic selection of Star Wars cards with more powerful characters and ships, from Luke Skywalker to Jabba's Sail Barge. Two equally important and beloved Star Wars things. You earn currency as you play to upgrade your decks and draft new cards, allowing each player to build a unique strategy, honing in on the specific powers they like best. The Rebels and the Empire each have different bases that they fight from that can change and be destroyed as the game progresses, along with a force track to battle for control and use the midichlorian based powers on your cards. Star Wars The Deck Building Game is set to release in March, with pre-orders now available on the Fantasy Flight Store or retailers like Zartu. Or, if you're a Jedi, you can just wait for the change in the Force to let you know when it's out. From starting a crisis to stopping one, pandemic designer Matt Leacock's next co-op game is all about tackling climate change. Daybreak tasks players with cooling the atmosphere and managing devastating effects of global warming. Built upon a similar system to Pandemic, Daybreak has players taking control of one of several world powers, all of whom must band together to solve a planet-ending crisis. The players must make serious changes to their nation's policies in order to lessen the impact of the Earth's environment and find new ways to support their populations. Every world power will have its own unique challenges to tackle too, thanks to their unique national impacts on the environment. At the same time, the players must react to the various effects of climate change and ensure that their people remain safe and supported. Daybreak looks to utilize the tried and tested co-op game formula found in Pandemic, presenting the players with increasingly difficult threats for them to manage, whilst also working towards a shared goal and apply it to an incredibly important subject. Climate change is very much a real issue that real-life world leaders are trying and often failing to deal with, so Daybreak arrives at a crucial time. Expected to arrive with backers in May, you can still buy a late pledge for you and your local leaders to learn more about what you can do in a stylish, interesting game. Whilst there are dozens of board games themed around wildlife and the natural world, few of them display the level of expertise and passion as Elizabeth Hargrave's releases. This is largely because Hargrave is a scientist and environmental campaigner first and foremost, and a wonderful game designer second. Hargrave aims to continue informing the tabletop gaming world on all things nature with her upcoming board game, Mother Tree. Focused around the concept of, excuse me, mycorrhizia, of the symbiotic relationship between mushrooms and trees, Mother Tree, which is a working title, looks to dive deep into this particular area of natural science. The name Mother Tree refers to a type of enormous tree whose roots form a network in which surrounding plants and fungi can connect to, communicating information and sharing nutrients. I, for one, am desperate to know the gossip of the forest, so would love to join the communication network in any way that I can. The details of Mother Tree are still vague, with Hargrave explaining that players will be using a pool of shared cards in order to spread their seedlings throughout the underground network of roots. But for fans of Hargrave's unique ecological games, when Mother Tree hits crowdfunding in 2023, there won't be much room for competition. While we now ignore or heavily adapt most of Freud's teachings in modern psychology, you can't deny the man had some interesting ideas. One of which was a psychoanalysis, which studied the unconscious mind. So in the board game, Unconscious Mind, you can have a guess at what you'll be doing. You and the other players are all part of Freud's psychology society and are heading out into the world to practice his theories. Open your own clinics and even delve into patients' dreams or their unconscious minds. When you do, you can treat patients, sending them out as happier individuals, and publish your own theories along the way, all the while growing your reputation as a psychologist. However, unlocking deep fears varied in dreams takes time. You'll travel to places across Vienna to meet with Freud and gain insight to better understand your patients. As you do, you'll gradually peel away the layers of consciousness to finally crack the troubles in the person's mind, and you literally peel, 
because there are transparent cards to represent your delve into their deep set minds. Unconscious Mind funded on Kickstarter last year and is now in the process of printing the game. As it reaches Pledge's hands, we can hopefully expect to see it reach shelves sometime soon after in 2023. And now, for those patient enough to stick around this long, here's a legacy game to get stuck into. My Island follows in the footsteps of My City, where you build up your own metropolis to score points. This time, you're off on a vacation to sunnier shores as you explore and develop your very own island. Decide its history, shape the landscape, and even discover the secrets it holds as you join various hexagonal tiles to create your home. The game is played over 24 chapters where you can pick and make permanent changes to switch up the rules and components of your tropical paradise. Full details on My Island are still vague, but for anyone who loves My City or is just looking for a legacy title, this could be the board game to keep an eye on in 2023. And because that was a bit of a short entry, we're sneaking another one in here that looks fun but doesn't have quite enough info to fill its own section. The Art Project sold us on the cover alone. This adventure game sees you trek across the world uncovering priceless stolen art. From Scandinavia to Japan, you'll be working together to complete various missions using a shared pool of weapons, allies and clues. Will you find all the stolen art by the end of the mission deck or will priceless history be lost to time? We can't wait to find out more and look forward to hopefully getting our hands on it in 2023. Through reputable sources, of course. We wouldn't steal it or anything. Uh, so those were 20 board games to watch out for this year. Let us know which games you're looking forward to in the comments and subscribe to Dicebreaker for more great board game content from Let's Plays and recommendations, as well as videos on TTRPGs, miniatures and card games. You can also head over to Dicebreaker.com for news, reviews and more to stay up to date with the tabletop world. For now though, we're sorry for the damage we likely just caused to your wallets, and we hope you have a lovely day. <laughs>